Hello everyone, and welcome back to a new YouTube video. Sorry for being gone for so long. There's been a lot of things going on in my life, such as college, I work a job part-time, and I've been taking care of other personal business that, that's taken up a lot of time, but I've had the free time now to do some recent events, to record a new video, and hopefully with this video, I can go out and stop, or at least teach you some things about the coronavirus that is going around. There are a lot of mis misunderstandings, misinformation, and just flat out lies that have been put out there ever since the coronavirus became a big, became so widespread. Um, the coronavirus is a respiratory illness that can spread from person to person through close contact or through an affected person's cough or sneeze. The reason they are called coronaviruses is because of their structure. They have crown-like spikes on their surfaces, which look similar to a crown, thus naming them coronaviruses. And we've encountered many coronaviruses throughout human time before. And one of them made the news back in 2003, which was the SARS virus, which was a type of coronavirus that infected 8,000 people and had a 10% mortality rate but it did not have the fitness to persist in the human population, and eventually it did die out. Another similar coronavirus was the MERS coronavirus back in September of 2012, which infected humans, bats, and camels. And the new coronavirus that we currently have, COVID-19, is similar to these. However, it spreads a lot faster, and it thrives in the human body. It has a much lower mortality rate than SARS, but it, has, it still has claimed more lives due to the amount of people that have been infected. We don't really know where the coronavirus originated from, but there are some theories. Some uh, One theory is that, that it may have originated in a bat, and someone may have consumed the bat, but we don't really know yet. It's still just theories. Now for the spread of the virus. The virus can be spread through droplets, which can be inhaled. The virus can also survive on surfaces that an infected per person may have touched, and then touching either their face or open orifices. Spread is possible even though the infected person may not show symptoms. Symptoms only really start to show after either 2 through 14 days. So even though it has been maybe 12, 13 days, have come in contact with someone infected, you still may be infected I, even if you don't show sy symptoms. They take a while to develop. And as of today, there have been 720,661 cases with over 170 countries and territories which have reported cases of the novel coronavirus. The US has 141,169 cases as of today. These numbers may go up exponentially over the next few weeks, as results begin to come in. Most countries have enacted preventive measures to try and contain the virus. Currently, where I live, there has been a lockdown put in place. Gatherings have been reduced to 10 people only, and public services like schools have either been moved online or stopped at all altogether. Workers who are considered non-essential are made to stay at home while workers are considered essential continue to work which gives me more time to do more types of these videos <laughs> since I have nothing else to do now the symptoms of the virus take around 2 to 14 days to really make themselves noticeable the symptoms of the COVID-19 virus are fever cough shortness of breath fatigue and other respiratory symptoms People have reported having pneumonia in both lungs, failure of the organs, and in some cases, it has resulted in death. People who have recovered can be left with reduced lung functions and scarring of the lungs, which can cause permanent damage. And it makes it really difficult to judge if someone has the coronavirus or a simple cold or flu through just a physical exam. People can develop either severe symptoms of the virus while others may develop more mild symptoms and can recover with minimal damage. 
the people that are higher at risk are older people, people that are more immunocompromised, people with diabetes, heart disease, chronic lung failure, kidney disease, or going through immunosuppressive treatment are highest at risk. The way to find out if someone is sick is through a laboratory test, which can confirm the presence of the virus. Now, by now, most of you may know how to prevent the coronavirus and how to slow down the spread. But for those who don't know, there are very simple steps you can take to prevent yourself from getting sick or others sick around you. Most of them are common sense, such as staying at least six feet away from people who are sick. Don't touch your mouth, face, nose, or eyes. Wash your hands with soap for at least 20 seconds. If you can't wash your hands at the moment, then use alcohol-based hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% alcohol. And if you're sick with the coronavirus or any disease in general, just stay home. Don't travel. Don't go anywhere. Don't go sightseeing. The main reason the coronavirus has become as widespread as it has is because people don't stay in their homes. People don't self-isolate. People keep going out. They keep going into crowded areas, spreading their germs all over, infecting vulnerable people, infecting those that can't protect themselves, basically. Just stay home if you are sick. Cover your mouth when you sneeze or cough, and clean or disinfect areas that you may have touched if you are sick. Now, there are no current treatments, and there are no current vaccines, which can either cure or completely prevent the coronavirus. The most that we can do is relieve the symptoms while the immune system fights off the virus. There are no antivirals, so if you exhibit symptoms and you believe that you may have the coronavirus or COVID-19, you should seek medical care. Now, there is plenty of good information out there about the coronavirus. There's a lot of good information, a lot of important things that you should know. But along with those important things and useful knowledge, there's also a lot of misinformation and a lot of rumors going around about the coronavirus. One of these myths that I have seen go around is about eating garlic. Although eating garlic is a good food, it doesn't do much or anything to prevent or combat the coronavirus. Right now, there is no treatment for the coronavirus. If you see someone claiming to cure the coronavirus, it's flat out not true and it's just lies. Another myth that I have seen is that, that the coronavirus originated in a lab in China. There is no evidence to support this, and the coronavirus is just another one of nature's products of evolution. Something I have seen recently is a lot of people are buying hand sanitizer. Although hand sanitizer helps when you don't have soap or water to wash your hands, it does not replace washing your hands. Washing your hands with soap and water is more effective than using hand sanitizer and it removes more bacteria and viruses than hand sanitizer does. So, if you're at home, instead of using hand sanitizer for everything, just wash your hands. It's more effective. It's more, it's more cost effective too as hand sanitizer has become very expensive. So, only use hand sanitizer when you don't have access to soap and water. Another myth I have seen was about using antibiotics to combat the coronavirus. Antibiotics are meant for bacteria, hence the name. So antibiotics do nothing to fight the coronavirus. It's just wasting your antibiotics. So, therefore, you should avoid using antibiotics to try to treat the coronavirus, as it won't do anything. And, although it may seem like there's nothing to do while being quarantined. There are a few things you can try to do to not be as bored. You can make YouTube videos at 4 a.m. in the morning while everyone else is asleep. You can learn a new language. I'm personally trying to study some French as I, I used to study French back in high school, but now that I'm in college, they didn't really have that class, so I'm using Duolingo to try to learn some French or try to relearn some French that I may have lost. I'm trying to put together a workout routine 
maybe that's something that might be interesting for you guys. I I mean I usually go to the gym before, but now with the coronavirus, it's forced me to do so at home workout routines. So if that's something that interests you, you can look that up. Athlean X has a great workout routine that he posted not too long ago. It's really great. I've been using it for a while. You could go to sleep, <laughs> play video games with your friends, or le- learn a new skill that you've been wanting to learn. Maybe learn how to cook, write a novel or book that you've been thinking about doing, learn how to draw, do a puzzle, learn how to sew a face mask, or organize your house. Just because you're quarantined, it doesn't mean that there isn't anything to do. You just have to go and look at those little things that you can do to keep you entertained. Because being quarantined really (laughs) is boring if you have nothing to do. Although there may not seem like there's a lot that we can do to help prevent or combat the coronavirus. There are a few things that we can do to slow down the spread and prevent us from getting sick. What we can do together as a community is to stay home. By staying home, you reduce the risk of becoming infected yourself and spreading it to others in your family or to strangers. Especially if you have or know someone that is older or is immunocompromised, you should try to stay home unless it is important, such as groceries or something else that you may need. However, going out to the market and buying out all the toilet paper is not going to help anyone. You only risk yourself from getting sick get only what you need. There are other families that may need it more than you do. Some people just go to get the basic needs, basic supplies, and buy now everything is not the way to do it. It just puts more people at risk. Only go out if you have to, or if you need to go seek medical treatment. And always remember that we are all dealing with this right now. This is hard on all of us. We're all fighting an outbreak that has brought a lot of destruction and a lot of disruptions in our daily lives. But remember that we are all human beings dealing with this, and we will get past this. I also want to thank all the nurses, doctors, essential workers, professionals who have been fighting the good fight for us. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed, and I hope that you all may have learned something today or Maybe something that you may have not known. Whatever it was, I hope you enjoyed.